This is the new Audi RS4. I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, that looks just like the old Audi RS4. And that's because it's actually a heavily revised version of the B9 RS4. Can you spot the difference? Anyway, time's up because I'm going to go into detail in this video. Welcome to the heart of the beast. <laughs> It's a 2.9 litre twin turbo V6 and it drives all four wheels via an eight speed automatic gearbox. Now it has 450 horsepower and 600 newton metres of torque, which is exactly the same as the old RS4. However, Audi has tweaked it slightly and it now apparently has a broader torque curve so you get more performance throughout more of the rev range. Also, they fitted it with a petrol particulate filter to reduce the amount of emissions coming out of the exhaust pipe. Though I wonder if that has affected the performance. Well, it shouldn't do. Audi says this car do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 4.1 seconds, which is exactly the same time they quoted for the pre-facelifted version. However, that car was a lot quicker. I actually timed it from 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. <laughs> So what will this one do? Well, I haven't got my specialist timing gear here. Reason being that this Audi actually comes with its own timer. You can time it from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, 0 to 62, 0 to 200 to the standing quarter or the eighth of a mile. We're just gonna do the 0 to 100. Let's do it. So all I have to do is have the car in sports mode, gearbox in sports, have the stability control in sports mode. Keep your left foot on the brake, follow the throttle. See what happens. Here we go, building boost. Yeah. Lots of quattro grippage. And that's your 60. And we have a time. 3.8 seconds. Hmm. So has that particulate filter made a difference? Well, it looks like it. Although obviously this is to 62 miles an hour. Did that extra two mile an hour take 0.3 of a second? Hmm. Well, actually, I timed this car using my specialist timing gear from 0 to 60. And the best I could get at this car was 3.6 seconds. I tried it over and over again, and that's what it did every single time. So that was 0.1 of a second slower than I got out of the pre-facelift version. So maybe the particulate filter has had 0.1 of a second's effect. Who cares? The RS4 has some uprated brakes over the standard A4. So you've got 375 millimeter discs up front, at the back, you've got 330 millimeter discs, and these front calipers actually have six pistons in them, which is quite a lot of pistons. Though the carbon ceramics in the RS6 has 10 pistons in them. 10. Mind you, six is still quite a lot. Right, let's see how good these brakes are. So we're gonna do a brake test from 70 miles an hour. When I come to the lying down cone, I'm gonna do a full emergency stop. Now the cone after it is exactly 50 meters away. This car should be able to brake before I reach that end cone, but will it? Let's find out. Oh yes, car wow, car science. Here's 70, here's the braking point. Come on, please stop. Please stop. <laughs> Did stop, <laughs> thank God. I hate the way they do that with the hazard lights. I know it's for safety, but it does my head in. The front and rear wheels sit out an extra 24 millimeters from the body over the normal A4. That gives you a wider track for better road holding. The Quattro all-wheel drive system sends 60% of the power to the rear wheels and 40% to the front under normal driving. So it is generally rear drive bias. However, it can send a maximum of 85% of the power to the back wheels or a maximum of 70% to the front wheels, depending on what's needed. You get uprated sports suspension over the normal A4 and it sits 30 millimetres lower to the ground. Obviously, the setup is stiffer, but if that bothers you, why don't you get the adaptive dampers? Because then you have a wider range of operation with a comfort mode, which is just better over bumps, to a dynamic mode, which stiffens everything up for reduced lean in the corners. Obviously, being the sportiest model, you get a rated anti-roll bars at the front and the back as well. The RS4 uses its braking system to help improve the handling. So when you're turning into a corner, it'll slightly brake the inside wheels to get the car rotating. In the UK, you get a Quattro Sport differential as standard, so that can send power to the rear wheel with the most grip for better corner exiting traction. Now your BMW and Mercedes fanboys will be going, oh, yeah, Audis, they're no fun, are they? Not as good on track, are they? Yeah, yeah, whatever, but how often do you go on track? And if you do go on track a lot, get a proper track car, not a car such as this. But for fast road driving, 
Audi's R5, and I'll illustrate now. So I've got it in its sporty mode, going manual on the gearbox. Oh, yeah, quattro grip, and it does move around. They've made it a lot more playful than... Oh, oh, oh. Bit of understeer there, though. You will get that if you get too crazy. So you do have to watch what you're doing. Oh, and this thing does rip along and freaking. That was a lot of air. Oh, and the way it landed was epic. So controlled. It does drive as fast and as grippy as you ever need a car to on the road. And obviously you can fill it full of stuff. You can have your Labrador in the boot, your kids in the back seats, all fine. Well, apart from feeling a bit car sick after you've just driven like an idiot. But it will do the business and put a smile on your face when you're ripping it down a country road. There are two things to note though. One is the suspension setting with the adaptive dampers. On a smooth road, sport's great, keeps it nice and flat, but if the road's a bit bumpy, it really does start to skip around too much and you lose traction. So you want to run it in auto mode, most of the time in the UK that is. It'd be fine in Germany where the roads are smooth. Then there's the fact that you can get it with something called variable rate steering, which is supposed to make the car more sporty and responsive, but it just feels weird, so don't do that either. Mercedes and BMW fanboys can shut their traps. This is a fun car to drive. The RS4 gets some styling upgrades over the normal A4, so you get a more aggressive grille, you've got your RS4 badging, you've got a deeper front bumper, bigger air intakes. Now the changes over the previous RS4 include some redesigned light graphics. When you open it, it does that with the indicators. You've also got slightly different look to the air vents themselves, and there's another vent, but that's fake. I'll prove it with the car where I would twiggle it of truth. Look, this one here. Now, if you compare the look of the new one compared to the old one side by side, I think you'll agree that this new one does look better. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments box below. One of the key standout features for the RS4 is down the sides, and it's these blistered wheel arches, which look really, really cool. You also get some side skirts, and depending on which version you go for, you can have the door mirrors and the window surrounds in either this black, silver, or carbon fiber. Now, this is all the same as the previous RS4, but there is something new for this version, and it's some new alloy wheel designs. As standard you get 19 inches but these are the upgraded 20 inches and these things cost £2,400. At the back the RS4 gets a big roof spoiler, you also get the RS4 badging there, sportier deeper rear bumper with a diffuser, it's fake, so are these little venti bits here they're fake and these ones around the lights they're fake. The exhausts aren't fake though, you get your classic oval RS exhaust pipes and in there look there's Ooh, two actual pipes. Reason being, this is a sports exhaust. And look, you see that? That's a valve that opens and closes, depending on whether you want it to be noisy or quieter. What are the differences compared to the old version? Ooh, quite hard to spot. The design of the bumper is slightly different, but the key thing is this. Look, you've got this chrome strip in the rear lights now. Hmm. Anyway, here's a before and after, so you get the idea. Similar, in it? Here on the inside, upgrades over the standard A4 include RS sport seats, so they are body hugging and they have quilted leather. In fact, it's Nappa leather, it's super soft. These seats actually have a massage function as standard, which is pretty good. You also get an RS perforated leather steering wheel with RS badging and it's got the flat bottom because Audi likes flat bottoms. There's perforated leather on the gear selector and RS badging down here. The starter button has a little red surround to it as well to signify that this car is sporty. You also get aluminium pedals, aluminium RS branded kick plates, and they illuminate when it's dark. Then you get Audi RS Sport styles, though I don't like the new design of them. They're kind of like weird, like upside down L shape. I much prefer just the simple round version on the previous generation car. Still, the digital driver display is good, and the new infotainment system is better than the old one. It's a faster system. You've got a bigger screen. It's a really nice screen actually. And you have some special like RS related data on there. So you can check your RS, see how hot your differential is, your gearbox and all that kind of stuff. It is a shame that it's a touch screen only though, which is a bit annoying. The old system had like a sort of a wheel here, which I just found easier to use while driving. Still to make up for that, Audi has given you some proper aluminium for the gear shifters this time. They're just horrible cheap plastic in the old car. That is way, way better. Other differences include some RS specific trim here on the inside. So you can get different kind of materials for this bit and this bit. This has the very top of the range carbony bits. I'm not really a fan. I prefer like kind of metallic-y, just saying. 
Here in the back, you still get to experience some of the RS-ness. So uh, you've got the carbon trim here as well. But more importantly, they don't cheap out on the rear seats. They're the same quilted Nappa leather honeycomb design as in the front, which is great. And being the RS4 Avant and an estate, means you've got a decent amount of headroom, knee room's all right as well. And it's quite a nice car to travel in the back of. And there is practicality throughout this car. So look, we've got big door bins, that's great. And obviously you can fold this down and then you've got some cup holders here. Now they are quite big, like you can even fit this in here. I uh, just squeeze, go on. Oh, that wasn't it breaking, don't worry. Look, it's all fine. And of course you can fold down the central seat as well so if you need to carry longer items and two people either side you can this is a great car for going on holiday to the alps in skiing put your skis through there fine the great thing about the audi rs4 is that you get supercar performance with estate car practicality it gets an automated tailgate as standard and check this out the low cover also moves up automatically you see that you catch that bit you have oh let me get out of the way you have 495 litres of space, so there's plenty of room for your big boys' toys. The only thing about the boot is that BMW M340i has 500 litres of space, so beats it by five whole litres. In fact, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my in-depth video review of that car. Still, other than that, really, really practical. And look, you can fold down the rear seats from here, which is always handy. And what do you expect, really, from an estate car? Look, lovely. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. The RS4 is electronically limited to 155 miles an hour. It can actually do 174 and Audi will let it do that, but only if you pay for the very top of the range Vorsprung model. The design of Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system means that the engine is pushed quite far forward in the car's nose. And as a result, it sits in front of the front axle. Look, that's where the front axle is. And that isn't ideal for handling. Now, BMW fanboys, please can you explain to the Audi fanboys in the comments below why that isn't a great thing and why your BMWs don't have that problem. The metal seatbelt buckle rattles against the plastic side of the sports seats. And when you go around corners, it can go like that. And then when you just sat at the traffic lights of the car idling, you hear this noise. If you want this car to sound as good as it can, then you have to pay Audi an extra £1,250 for the optional sports exhaust. But even then, it doesn't sound that amazing. Have a listen. This is in sports mode, with the valve open. Yeah. I think that new petrol particulate filter is partially to blame for the muted noise. It just deadens the sound somewhat. It's not helping the fact that this car has a 4,000 RPM soft limiter, so you can't rev it out when it's stationary. I don't think the old RS4 had that, and I think it sounded better. Here's a clip of the old RS4's exhaust note. What do you think about that? Is, is it better? Let me know in the comments below. The B9 version of the Audi RS4 is only available as this estate. You cannot get a saloon body style like you could with the B8 version. Now, I don't care, but you might prefer the saloon. And anyway, let's be honest, it's better to have the choice, isn't it? It's not all negative, though. Here's five good things about this car. Audi has now given this car its arse modes, and they are configurable. You've got two of them, so you can set up things like the drive system, the suspension, the steering, the engine sound, the Quattro Sport differential, ferocity, as you like it. And then you can quickly toggle between arse mode one and arse mode two using this button on the steering wheel. It's very similar to what BMW has in its M cars, but it's a welcome addition. If you upgrade to the forged aluminium wheels, you will reduce the car's unsprung mass by eight kilograms, and you can reduce it by a further eight kilograms if you then pay extra for the carbon ceramic brake disc, which also then get eight piston brake calipers. As part of the midlife update, Audi has removed some of the car's sound editing material to make the car light, and they've reduced the weight by 45 kilograms. So maybe now I can lift it. Oh. No, but then I suppose it does still weigh 1,745 kilograms. Oh. And has managed to improve the economy of this car, so it now does 29 miles per gallon. Now, when I looked at the economy for the previous generation version, it said 32 miles per gallon. Now, that was tested under the old testing regime, which was too lenient. This new one was tested under the new WLTP, so it is better and the emissions are less because Audi's told me so and you know they wouldn't lie not Audi 
You can turn the stability control all the way off to behave like a hooligan, even though this is an Audi with four wheel drive. Woohoo! Hooligan! 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 Oh yeah! Yeah! For me, the real beauty of this RS4 is just how easy it is to live with every day. Now, because of the bigger wheels, you do get a bit more road noise than in a standard A4. But other than that, you would not know the difference, especially when you've got the adaptive suspension and it's in comfort mode. It's fine over bumps. It's really easy to live with. It hides its darker side for most of the time. You could say that it's a very cunning psychopath because it does go completely insane where you put your foot down gearbox kicks down and then bah, off you go and it's just yeah that's a hundred right braking don't worry everyone this is a closed circuit <laughs> it's fine but it just takes off when you need it to the gear shifts maybe aren't the fastest ever but when you're just tootling around it's nice and smooth and relaxing changing gear this is a car that flies under the radar and is super easy to live with Finally then, we need to talk about the economy. So on the journey here, when I was being very, very careful, I managed to get 30 miles per gallon average, which is pretty impressive. What's more telling though, is what the long term is for this car. Though bear in mind that I have used it in drag races and it's been through the hands of other motoring journalists, which means that they won't have been driving that economically. And it still managed to do an average of 20 miles per gallon which considering the performance and how it will have been driven mark my words that's not too bad at all however you may still want something a, a little bit more leery something a little bit more crazy every time you drive it something like a mercedes mg c63 let's talk about the price shall we so the audi rs4 starts from 65,000 pounds and it comes with lots of kit as standard so you get matrix led headlights you get tri-zone climate control you get keyless go and heated seats if you pay a bit extra you can get the rs4 carbon which gets black bit to trim and carbon about the place such as here on the door mirrors and you also get 20 inch alloy wheels instead of the standard 19s. The range topping Vorsprung model actually builds on the carbon and adds stuff like automatic cruise control, a 360 degree camera system and a Bang & Olufsen stereo. Then being an Audi of course there are lots of extra options you can spend even more money on such as this sunroof which will set you back £1,600. In fact this very car I've got here costs list price £82,000. So then, what's my final verdict on the revised Audi RS4? Should you bleh, avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Audi RS4. Now, it might not be quite as leery as its equivalents from BMW and Mercedes, but it's still good fun to drive. And actually, it's the better performance car to have as a daily driver. <laughs>